So welcome, everybody. Welcome. I'm so happy to see you. Some very familiar, friendly faces. And uh, welcome to Starting Out Bright. If we have not had the pleasure of meeting before, my name is Noreen Savage. And I get asked, why am I doing this? And very briefly, I'd like to tell you my short story. Back in 2019 of May of that year, my friend Lori posted on Facebook that she had lost 57 pounds by using a program, Bright Line Eating. And if anybody was interested to just text message her or private message her, and my fingers flew over there as fast as I could, because at 270 pounds, I was looking for a way out. I had tried every diet known to man that I thought was healthy enough to do with very, you know, I'd have success, but then I wouldn't have success. But at this point in my life, I was dealing with a lot of pain in my knee and my back and my feet. But still, when Lori told me the four bright lines, and if you're new to bright line eating, the four bright lines are no sugar, no flour, three meals a day, and weight and measured portion. I heard all of that. And I thought there's absolutely no way there that was just way too confining. But as I said, I had some pain issues going on for probably the first time in my life, but they had lasted a long time that a few months. And so that was my willingness to try something so crazy as bright line eating. And I am so glad now I'm, I'm grateful for that pain because it has brought me to today. And I'm 65 pounds out of twice that much that I need to lose, but we're taking one pound at a time. And as Barb Gray says, I am determined to finish the job. <laughs> so that's where I am. And about a year, I promised myself if I lasted one year, I would do the same thing as my friend Lori. I would post on my private Facebook page and I would help anybody I could. Well, just before that year, I'm a Christian and I felt God was just telling me, Noreen, you can do more than that. This is now the time of Zooms. And he put on my heart to connect people, especially those who may be starting out or resuming with all these wonderful people I've met on the internet, this whole great big loving community uh, for Bright Line Eating. So that's where I am. And I could not be more thrilled to have you meet my friend, Heather Ibrahim. And she's a Michigan buddy. I wore even green for Michigan State. <laughs> and I am so happy to have you here, Heather. We actually met for lunch a few weeks ago, which was great. And it was really fun. Yeah, it was. Um, so Heather, you know, other than that one time, we've mostly chatted by text messages, and but we did talk the other day. Um, you know, I like to do that before the Zoom chat because I want to know what's on your heart and how you got to where you were able to be accomplished in Bright Line Eating. So if you could please just take us back to before you got into Bright Line Eating, what was your state of mind? Where were you? Um, okay. That was sure. us. So a little bit about my stats. I am 48. I'm five foot zero. Um, because whenever you say five foot, people say five foot what? And so I always say five foot zero. Um, I am married. Uh, I've been married for 15 years and I have a 13, almost 14 year old and a 10 year old. Um, I, looking back at my life, I was pretty much uh, overweight most of my life. Thinking back, I don't think that Starting right around puberty, I mean, as a child, I, was, I wasn't overweight, um, but uh, starting in maybe like sixth grade, um, I started noticing that I was heavier than uh, most of the kids that were, I was in school with. And um, that continued through into adulthood. Um, the weight just kept coming on and um, my highest weight that I know of was to about 220. And so when you're five feet tall, 220 is a really big number. Um, and then in uh, 2002, I got really sick. I got West Nile mm. and um, 
I was in the hospital for seven weeks. I was in a coma for two weeks. Wow. Um, in intensive care for three weeks in a regular room for another three weeks. And then in a rehab hospital for another two weeks when I got back to Grand Rapids. So um, after that experience, I lost quite a bit of weight. I lost um, because one of the things that that did was I completely lost my appetite. So I had no desire to eat. Um, it wasn't. I mean, obviously, I was thankful <laughs> that I was losing weight. And I thought, okay, if I had to go through all of this, I might as well have one benefit. And there, there were more benefits than that. But um, think, that was you think that was just because of like intravenous feeding or what? That you lost? I, yeah, I, I'm really not sure. I'm really not okay. sure. The only other time that's ever happened to me is when I was pregnant um, with my son, I had the same thing. So it was really weird because I felt like I was having a flashback to West Nile by completely losing my appetite. I didn't get morning sickness or anything. I just didn't ever want to eat anything. So anyway, I, um, my lowest weight, uh, I got down to just in the 140s. So I lost quite a bit of weight. I lost um, a lot. But then, so that was in probably 2004, because I had started running um, at that point. And so for the next 15-ish years, um, the weight just kind of started coming back on. Um, I don't think I got up to 220 at that point. When I started Brightline Eating, I was 208.8. Um, one of my acquaintances, a Facebook friend posted similar to what your, your story, Noreen, uh, one of my Facebook friends posted something about having lost 65 pounds in a year. And I was like, Oh my word, how did she do that? And so she said she did it through Brightline eating. And so I investigated it. Um, I bought the book. It was right at the summer end of the summer in 2019. I read the book when I was at my parents' cottage over Labor Day um, everybody else was out in the lake playing and having fun. And I was sitting on the couch reading the book because I was just glued to it. Um, so that's all I did. I, I haven't done the 14 day challenge. I haven't done uh, boot camp. That was all that I did. So, um, my husband decided that he was going to start with me when I started and we, my birthday is on September 13th and my husband's birthday is on September 16th. So we decided that we were going to start after our birthdays that it was going to be kind of our last big hurrah. Mm -hmm. um, and so we started on September 23rd of 2019. And um, on, your, on the slideshow, you had a slide that said all in. And that's kind of been one of my things that I've said from day one was that that day, I, I just went all in. I went all in. Uh, never looked back. Um, I haven't been a crystal vaser, but I haven't had any flour, haven't had any sugar um, since that day. And I know that my story isn't the same story as everybody has, but it was, I think only, I know only by the grace of God, it, w it was really, really quite easy for me to do. It was like, I don't know, mentally, there was like a switch that was fl a flipped in my mind. And it was just one day I was doing one thing, the next day, and every day since then, I've been doing something completely different. So do you think, I mean, we, we talked a little bit about this, that we had the mutual feeling that the science just really sold us. For me, I shut the book and I didn't even read the rest of the book for a couple months. I just like started up. But is that, do you think, what made the switch go off in your head that you were so convicted with um, parts of that science? Yeah, I, th I, I think. Know before. Yeah, I think. I think that. I really think that that is it. Um, that it just made it just made so much sense to me. Um, all of the science behind why everything else I had done up to that point had failed. Um, so I know listening to uh, being on a lot of these calls, a lot of people have said that they really felt hopeful for the first time in their lives, and that was really how I felt. I remember actually reading the book and crying because I was like, okay, I think this is finally the answer that I've been looking for my whole life. It's so great. You know, I will just randomly read parts like I have it on an audio. And I was listening again the other day to parts of the science. Do you remember in the book, and this is a spoiler alert, if someone hasn't read the book, Susan talks about the 
comparison of sugar, flour, heroin, and cocaine. Yeah. And that was. I just always remember the story of, you know, uh, the poppy seeds. You might chew on them and get a little lift, but you're not going to go and steal stuff out of your grandma's house to go get poppy seeds. But yet, if you take those and you take the essence of that plant, it's now this potent heroin. Right. which you'll shoot up your veins and you'll go and steal and kill people for, right. you know, and right. that just always like hit me like a rock. Like, wow, but that just makes and, sense. And, the, and that sugar is even more addictive than either of those two substances. That's the right. thing that was kind of makes complete sense, but it was just right. mind boggling when I read it. Yeah. And even all the down regulation that goes on where I know for myself, um, if I was going on a trip alone, like I, I needed to go up north to see my family or something, and I'd stop at the gas station, and I know I'm getting my bag of NMF for someone new that's not my food, and I know I'm going to have that bag with me, and it's like, it's almost like this craving, but, you know, once you, once you eat it, you know, the, the pleasure does not last very long. It's not right. A, it's not right. something that brings you joy, let's say. Right. So anyway, you started out, you were all in. Your husband was pretty much all in? Uh, not as much as me. Not as much as me. I would say that he was probably maybe 80%. Okay. He would, most evenings, he would eat an apple or a piece of cheese. He just didn't think that he could make it between dinner and the next meal. Okay. Um, he was at that point playing soccer twice a week. So he was doing uh, some exercise. But of course, as a male, he completely sailed right past me with losing weight, which was super frustrating because here I am uh, super, super bright and he's not and he's losing weight faster than me. So um, he lasted through about the first part of December. And by that point, he had already lost 30 five pounds. And I, I think I was at 23 at that point. Um, but that's so, still a pretty good clip in three months. Yeah, it, it is a pretty, 23 it is a, pounds is pretty good. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It's a lot faster than I'm losing weight now. That's for sure. But, right. um, so the, by the, um, by my one year anniversary, so September 23rd of 2020, I had lost 71.5 pounds wow. um, and I am now down to 125.2. So how um, close is that to where you want to be? Well, my goal weight is 120 um, okay. because for, for my height, it really probably should be lower than that, but I'm already in a size two and an extra small. And so I have no desire to shop in my daughter's clothing department. So I am really going to be okay with 120. I, um, my original goal weight was 125. And about six months ago, I decided, no, I, I think I can make that number lower. So I moved down to 120. So hopefully in the next few days, I'm going to hit the 125. I was really hoping it was going to be today and that I was going to get to tell all of you that I hit that today well, you are 125.2 i know 125.2 no i'm still i'm waiting until i see that 125 and i can take a photo of it on my scale and send it to my friend jennifer because she's um one of my buddies awesome. um and uh so at that point i'm gonna start maintenance and okay. now I what will that mean for you and again for those who are new this is like the this is like the stuff that blows my mind. You know, if you're on any other diet, which you've been on a few, right? Right. Um, to me, there was never any end game. And for this, you actually add in more food. And it's just kind of mind blowing. So what are you going to start with? Well, according to the plan, the first ad is a grain at lunch. Um, so that's what I will, that's what I will be adding. Okay. And I know that people have talked about um, that. I think in the book, it tells you that you should 
keep going um, with that same plan and not add anything else for two weeks just to see how things work out. And if you continue to lose weight, then you move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. I mean, with how slow my weight loss has been uh, yeah, for more than the, the last six months, I think it's probably going to be more like a month. I'll have to be on the first ad for like a month to just see how things are going, but so, that's okay. So I'm you right mentioned that you were a runner before that you did some five Ks. Have you incorporated exercise? No, I really haven't. Um, well, last summer, I guess I, I do. We live right by uh, Riverside park, which is the largest park in Grand Rapids. And um, so I, I do enjoy riding my bike in the park with my daughter and my little dog in the front basket of my bike. Um, and so other than that, and some walking around our neighborhood, I haven't really done a whole lot. And I was only a runner for like about a year and a half. Yeah. Um, I did enjoy it. Um, but I don't, I don't think that I'll go back to running. I think there's other things that I will enjoy doing more. Well, I think that being that the time of year, especially, it's going to be just everything open to you. Right. I wanted to ask you, okay, you have a, a, a couple things that I'm hearing that are just kind of unique. A lot of people do get the support of like the 14 day challenge or the boot camp. Now you went by the book and you've stayed bright. What did you glean from the book though, that you used as tools? I'm assuming the scale, obviously, but since yep. that's one of the bright lines, yep. but what are the other things that you used or did you use anything else? Well, I know you did the food yeah. journal too, because you showed me a picture of that. Yeah. So uh, the one of the things that I really liked about the book is that she has the, the four bright lines, which we mentioned already, and all of the other things are more or less optional. Um, and, and I was a little bit nervous when I read the book, thinking about a five-year journal and this journal and that journal and and I, it, it freaked me out for a minute. And then I realized that really, this is my program. No one's forcing me to do anything and I can do what I can do. So I decided as I was reading the book before I started that I was going to do the food journal, which I think is really important and a, a thankfulness journal. Um, I am also a Christian. And so I do, uh, Bible study at my church. So I count that as kind of the meditation that I do. Um, and I started at the beginning, I was matched up with someone that I met on one of the Facebook groups. So we had a kind of an account accountability group where we would commit our food to each other every day and just kind of check in to see how things are going. Um, she didn't last for very long. Um, and then uh, I think it, Jennifer, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was at the end of 2019 in December that I got paired with a couple of other ladies and um, we have, Jennifer and I have been buddies since then, since I believe December, Jan December of 2019, I think is when it was. Um, we now have one other person who is a part of our accountability group. And so we just support each other. We commit our food. We send pictures of the meals, which is why I had those pictures that I yeah. sent that were in the slideshow. Um, and yeah, so we just kind of support each other. One of the other things that I um, have used is, well, going back a little bit. So my first week was kind of a train wreck. I really am kind of very wowed that I was even able to make it through the first week because I didn't do much planning. Um, I, yeah, I, I could have been a lot more prepared than I was. Um, so at the end, and I felt like I would get home from work and I would be in the kitchen for two hours making dinner and then the meals for the next day. And it just got to be a little bit overwhelming. So that weekend I came up with the idea of creating a 14 day meal plan. Um, because I also decided that I was not going to be making a different meal for my family than I was making for myself. Well, my husband, at that point, my husband and I were both still doing bright line eating. So I sat down that weekend and um, came up with 14 meals that I could then just kind of rotate every two mm -hmm. weeks. Um, I thought about some of the meals that I had been making, 
ways that I could tweak them a little bit to make them Brightline Eating compliant, meals that my family enjoyed, meals that I enjoyed. And so that was how I came up with that 14-day meal plan. And that was one of the things that you showed in the, in the slideshow. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it has been invaluable, really. It has been so helpful because it makes grocery shopping so easy. Um, I've now made those recipes so many times that I really pretty much rarely have to look at what I even need to put in the recipe. Um, and it's made my family happy and it's, it's just been really easy for me. So let me ask you about that for just a little second, Heather. Okay. Because I am one of the lucky ones who has somebody else cook in the house. Okay. So if I were to start this and you were going to teach me how to do this, I know you're saying, okay, you, you're already making these meals and that those meals. But if somebody was brand new and you were saying, okay, we're going to put a program together mm -hmm. like, so that you have two weeks, do you count on a, like a lot of leftovers or like, you know, piece by piece, what would you suggest that they do just for starters, like start with one week or start with just a couple of days? Or if I was going to do this, well, how did you go about doing it? Because some of, I looked at those, the meals that you wrote down and they sounded kind of interesting, even maybe like some ethnic foods and yep. you had some kind of interesting ideas just in your meal plan. And I didn't know if you just cook like that all the time or if you kind of just stopped and really like, this is the vegetable pile. This is, you know, how did you go about well, doing that? Yeah, I mean, my family has always been, my husband is from Egypt, and so we do probably eat a little bit more different food than the typical American household would eat. And thankfully, because of that, my children are really not picky eaters. And so that's really, I'm thankful for that, too. Um, so I just sat down and kind of wrote, started writing out a big list of all of the meals. I didn't put, punch them into, put them into the holes of the days or anything yet, because maybe five of them were chicken. Well, you'll notice that the majority, the majority of my meals, I, I don't like beef. And basically the only meat that I really like, I don't, we don't eat fish. And the only meat that I really cook is chicken or ground beef. So, I mean, it really kind of, uh, limits what, what we eat. And I kind of feel bad because I think that I am influencing my children kind of not in the greatest way that way, but, um, but they so may, I, you know, may, might become vegetarian too. Oh, know, my so daughter they, has already decided that okay. she's going to be a vegetarian. As so soon as she moves out of my house, she's going to be a vegetarian. And I said, well, that's fine. That's great. Go right ahead. Well, you know, um, now that, now that there's these bonds and noodles, this is like, this is an epiphany for me because I didn't know about them three weeks ago. And now I'm having three ounces for a meal as half of my protein. I'm thinking, what a great thing. I just threw them in some mushroom soup tonight. It was great. Plus I had the other half of my protein with some meat and it was just fantastic. But anyway, you, so yeah, so, so so I have found a couple of websites of uh, recipes that I really enjoy. Um, one of them is the Lemon Bowl. Um, she's actually from, she's of Syrian heritage and she lives in Grand Rapids also. I actually met her um, once at a mom's group that I was a part of. And she has a lot of really great recipes. Um, so that's the Lemon Bowl? The Lemon Bowl .com. Okay. Um, And probably if you looked at my list, at least three or four, maybe even five of the recipes are from her. Um, and I really didn't have to tweak much at all. Um, last night I made uh, chicken curry in the crock pot, which is great. And uh, I've started uh, going back to my office two days a week, which if you look at that meal plan, um, I'm doing crock pot meals on Monday and Tuesday, because those are the days that I'm going into my office. And I knew that if I was counting on coming home and making a meal after having been out of the house all day, which is not how my schedule has been for the last year, 
that it would just be too overwhelming and I wouldn't be able to do it. So I thought ahead and decided to make two crock pot meals on Monday and Tuesday. So anyway, in that recipe, um, it calls for sweet potatoes and I'm not in maintenance yet and may never get to add a uh, grain to dinner. So anyway, um, I decided to add uh, cauliflower to that recipe instead of sweet potato. So just picking another vegetable and adding it instead. So it, I just had to tweak a few things like that. Um, probably several. And, and the other thing is so I've been, so I've been doing this for about a year and a half with that 14 day uh, cycle of recipes and I've changed it maybe three or four times kind of seasonally. Like in the fall, I put chili as one of the meals um, with the changing of spring coming, I might, I might change, uh, another thing I was, um, I may, because I didn't work this past Monday, my kids had the day off of school. And so I ended up taking the day off. I thought to myself, Oh, I can actually try a new recipe today because I actually have more time. So I tried a new recipe, a recipe that I found on one of the Facebook groups and my whole family loved it. So it's probably going to get put on the 14 day meal plan. That's just great. And I think that there's probably, I would guess there's peace around that. Just for you knowing this is what it's going to be. I wanted to ask you something else, and I hope this is not uncomfortable to ask you this, but because I think it comes up quite a bit. I know it's come up for me. It wasn't my husband, because he doesn't need to lose any weight, but somebody else in the household who was doing bright line eating and then decided to stop. Mm -hmm. so, you know, but it could be like you're going hand in hand with a friend. It could it could be any kind of combination like that. And in your case, you even had an accountability partner that dropped off. Yeah. So I've had that in the past before Brightline Eating, where, you know, you're with a friend and we're going to do this. We're gung ho. We're going to exercise. And then someone drops off and then you just like forget it. You know, there went my motivation. How did you deal with that? Especially because it is your hus husband and you care about him. And right. so how did you deal with that and, you know, keep your eyes on your own plate? Well, yeah, well, that, well, that's what I had to do. And um, I have changed the way that I grocery shop. I, I mean, for my kids, I do, I do buy some NMF um, for them, but it's not definitely not as prevalent in our house as it was before. So even when my husband, he really only made it until I think the first part of uh, December. And so then he was like, oh, after the new year, oh, after Easter. And then obviously COVID hit and then it was like game over, right? Yeah. Um, and so he kept saying, and then he was saying, oh, okay, I'm going to start January 1st of 2021. And I'm thinking, oh yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> You're saying that, but are you actually going to do it? <coughs> And I think that because he saw what a huge success I had during 2020, he actually did start again on January 4th of 2021, and he is now down 30 pounds. So he's not quite to the point that he was when he stopped last time, but, but there is a big but this time. He is 100% in this time when he was not doing 100% last time. And you know what? I think that just really is an important point that you just said, because we are all, as we're going through this, whether we believe it or not, we are an example to somebody else. And to just be able to, to have blinders on the sides and just say, I'm going to mind my own path, like mm -hmm. right now, I cannot worry about anybody else. This is right. the path I've chosen and I am determined to keep going down this path. I mean, it's so easy to be sidelined by the next occasion. We have an occasion, you know, a, a little gathering this weekend. And already I was starting to make excuses of like, oh, they're going to have that special food. They're going to have that special drink. And it's just one night. But I've already learned that if I don't stay on plan, I'm not going to lose weight that week. I might stay the same, but all my effort 
prior to that day is going to go down the drain because I'm not going to lose weight that week. I just know from experience. So why sabotage myself? And so I really give you a lot of credit to be able to keep on going and go all the way, even through COVID. That's pretty remarkable. Yeah, I know. I th- I have heard from a lot of people that they can't believe that um, I was able to do that during COVID. And my response back to them is, you know, there were so many things that were out of my control that one of the things that was 100% in my control was what I put in my mouth. And so that was what I um, decided to do. But the fact that probably my biggest change um, happened during COVID has been really kind of weird too. Um, I have had, because now we all have to wear masks, so you can't really tell who people are anyway. Oh, yeah. Um, and so I have had several occasions at work that now that I'm back at work, like that our mail, this is just one example, like our mailman at my office, he and I would, would chat sometimes, you know, and the first time that I saw him, I said hi to him. Like I always used to say hi to him, like friend, a friendly hi, not like a hi, just saying hi to somebody on the street. And he just gave me the hi, somebody on the street. And I knew that he had no idea who I was. Wow. Um, I've had that same thing happen a couple of different times with, uh, with uh, people just like acquaintances that they, they have no idea who I am. So, yeah, so it was really strange because I wasn't able to really shop anywhere. Well, the other deal is while you're being able to stay home, you can just do your work in your pajamas, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, seriously, I though, I what happened to me is I did go down a couple pant sizes And one pair was almost like brand new because I really wasn't going anywhere. And I was able to wear just casual pants at home instead of dress pants. So didn't really get much wear, but I could think of worse problems than to give someone a brand new pair of pants. I'm pretty sure I skipped over a size 10. I think I went from a 12 to an eight. I'm pretty sure I didn't, I didn't ever wear a size 10. So tell me about the shopping experience when you finally did go and, uh, go shopping. So yeah, um, I had an interesting experience over Christmas break. Um, My sister and my sister lives in the same neighborhood that I live in. We live about a half a mile from each other. We're really close. She's one of my best friends. Um, And our kids are really close too. They're more like siblings than cousins. And uh, they're, they fight like siblings. Um, (coughs) Then you know. Yeah. yeah. And Mm -hmm. And so my sister invited my daughter and I to go uh, to the mall with them. And I hadn't been to the mall since way before I started Brightline Eating um, because it just wasn't fun. Why would I want to go to the mall? It's not fun to go shopping for clothes. It wasn't something that I enjoyed doing. Um, So we were there for a couple of hours, went to quite a few stores. There were a few stores that were actually letting you try clothes on. Um, Hmm. So I remember we were in a store and I was trying the, a dress on. And so I showed the girls what they're, I'm like, what do you think? And my sister asked me, she's like, well, what size is that? I said, it's a small. She said, well, I really think you need the extra small. And I was just like, what? <laughs> um, so it was, it was really kind of a parallel universe experience. Um, sometimes I catch myself. It's almost like I'm watching myself outside of my body. I mean, I know it's me. I, it's, it's my life and, I, and I'm the one who has gotten to the point where I am, but it, it's just really kind of weird some days too. So don't get me wrong. I'm super thankful, but it's just still really weird. Some you days. think that I'm just wondering because you said you used a thankfulness journal, a gratitude. And if you've been consistent with that, do you think that I'm assuming that some of that has been about the program that you're writing your gratitude? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you think um, that, that that helps you to maintain a sense of who I am right now? Because sometimes I could get lost in, well, what size am I? You know, whatever, but I'm still me. Right. You know? Right. But when you're really losing the weight, I remember one time a niece asking me, so what size are you in now? I had to go in the closet and look at the pair of pants because I had dropped like four or five sizes at that point. And I really couldn't remember. 
if it was a 16 or an 18. And I actually kind of got choked up thinking about it Mm -hmm. because it was just this moment of realization. I really am losing it from a high of size 26 to now a 16 and on the verge of a 14. Yeah. For me, that day, that day when we were at the mall, um, we kind of broke off. My daughter and I ended up going to Penny's for something. And my sister and her daughter, um, went to a different store and we walked into Penny's and I don't know what it was. It was just, it, the whole experience was really kind of overwhelming for me. And I just, because it was just me and my daughter, I just started sobbing. Mm. Um, and she, and I, I completely freaked her out. (laughs) Um, because she's like, mom, what's wrong? I'm like, nothing, honey, nothing's wrong. Nothing is wrong. Everything is right. It's just, it was just too much for me to handle mentally at that point. And it was just, So it was just a good cry. Yeah. It's a, it's such a realization of what you've done for yourself and the work, the the hard work has paid off. Right. So it was one thing that I did, which I would recommend if anyone is doing the thankfulness journal is I took some time on January 1st of 2021 and I sat on the couch and I read through my whole journal. And so that was really cool. Because uh, not everything is about bright line eating, but some of it is. And um, it was really cool to be able to read everything about, even about COVID and everything. Um, it was just a really cool experience to be able to go back and read all of, all of those days. That's fantastic. You had said, too, um, the other day I had asked you if you had a non-scale victory and you were talking about photographs. And I know that you do scrapbooking, and mm-hmm. that's very cool. But you also talked about getting together with your family mm-hmm. and having a photograph and how that was a totally different experience than others right. than you have experienced before. Yeah, my parents' uh, 50th anniversary was January 2nd of 2021. So the day after Christmas, we threw them a surprise uh, party, surprise anniversary party, and My brother-in-law, the one who lives a half a mile from me, he's a photographer. And so he had his camera out and was taking some great pictures of all of us. And just getting those photos back and being like, wait a minute, that's me? Me standing with my family and I'm the same size as my mom and my sister? It was just kind of mind-boggling. And you're not standing in the back. And I'm not standing in in the back and I'm not moving my daughter in front of me like that picture in the slideshow. When we were at Michigan's Adventure, right. um, I, I always would put my, my daughter in, in, right in front of me to, to block me, which obviously she was a mm-hmm. lot smaller than me um, and didn't block very much of me. But that was just kind of my mindset of what I, what I would do all the time. So, you know, you said that you were all in. It just, it just made me think, what was the easiest part of this for you? I mean, I know that, you know, you had been sold on the science, but once you got your food plan or what was, what did you think as far as sustainability of this? What, and going forward, what makes you think that this would be sustainable? Is it just because it's been somewhat easy for you up till now? I mean, you must have your moments where you want to have other food. I really don't. I know it's weird. I really don't. Um, I I haven't had one craving since the day I started. And I know that's not, and I know that's not normal. Um, My kids do have quite a bit of not my food around. um, And I mean, I look at it, but as soon as I look at it, that the thought of eating it never crosses my mind. And I don't know. It's just, Let let me tell you an experience I had today. This was a surreal moment too. So I used to bake a little bit. Actually, I would bake the sweets in the house. That's a big shock, I know. (laughs) But (laughs) like I had bought, I I think I thought they were never going to sell it again at Trader Joe's that they they had pumpkin puree. (laughs) And I had this thought, I am going to stock up. (laughs) And so I had like 18 (laughs) cans. Oh my gosh. Okay, 20. (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) I'm like the other day, I got to do something with this pumpkin. And 
you know, where is Natalie all or Linda Steele when you need them, you know, but anyway, <laughs> I, uh, I decided I am going to have just my own pumpkin recipe with what I have at home. Well, it turned out, eh, I, I didn't look in any cookbooks. I should have, but it just turned out, eh. So I thought, okay, how can I spice this up? And I looked online today for best pumpkin spice muffin. I was floored because I think I've probably made this before in some kind of version. I wrote it down. It had one, this is for 12 muffins, one and three quarter cup of sugar. No, one and three quarter cup of flour, one cup of sugar, a half a cup of brown sugar, a half a cup of oil. These are for 12 muffins. Oh my gosh. And I'm thinking, holy cow, this is crazy. This is the way I used to bake. I mean, is that just insane? That is insane. What? When, well, when back to your question about sustainability, I mean, one of the things that I think is a misnomer that people have about eating healthy is that it's boring. Um, I know there's a lot of people that do bright line eating that eat the same thing every day. And I'm not one of those people. Um, I, if, if that's what people do that more power to them, but I need a little bit more spice in my life than that. And so um, I try to make my food as fun as possible. So I'm, so I should back up and say that I, I have that 14 day meal plan for my family. Um, they basically kind of all do their own lunch, uh, lunch and breakfast. And so I make breakfast for my husband and I, we eat a lot of salads during the week. Um, if there are leftovers, I generally give him the leftovers for lunch and then make myself a salad. But breakfast, Jennifer would be able to tell you is kind of my time when I let myself be creative. Mm. And, um, there are so many recipes. I think I have so many saved on my phone that I could almost have a new recipe every single day for like an entire year. Wow. Um, so the, just the, the fun of cooking and the, I think the amount of food that we get to eat uh, or have to eat sometimes I think about it um, is what is, makes it sustainable for me. Um, it's not a little teeny portion of food. It's a lot of food. Um, I think it's something that I'll be able to do for the rest of my life. And from what I'm hearing you say is that you have in place your meal prep, you have your meal plans, but you save some creativity for yourself, for your breakfast. Right. And that's right. great. That I think that's a great way to do it. It's a yeah. nice flow for that. For the food. And I do, I do, I like to do, um, on, usually on Sundays, I do meal prep. Um, I make usually five breakfasts for my husband. Um, I do a couple of like baking things for myself. I usually do at least two or four servings a time and then divide it up and then put it in the freezer. Um, like this morning, I had a certain breakfast planned that I was going to take out of the freezer. I was running around crazy this morning, late, get, late to get on a meeting. I couldn't find what I had originally planned, but there was another thing in the freezer. So I ended up taking that out and eating that instead. Um, so yeah, it's just, I think that I am, um, the most at peace when I sit down at night to watch TV, having a lunch made for myself in the refrigerator, a lunch for myself, a lunch for my husband and breakfast for both of us also ready. Um, yeah. and if, and if I have something ready in the crock pot, that's just like the not, not icing on the cake, which I probably shouldn't say with bright line eating, but you know. Yeah, but I think it's great because, I mean, who who could argue with that? You know, and again, it goes back to this is about the food, but it's not all about the food. Right. Because meal planning is really a pen on paper and just thinking about the food, then shopping, then preparing it, then finally eating it. And right. where before it may have been mindless eating and mindless chatter, and not mm -hmm. even any organization in between. And if right. and for me personally, because I have the advantage of having someone else who cooks, 
but I do my breakfast and lunch. I actually have breakfast and lunch figured out. And that gives me peace of mind. So for wherever you are, do what you can. And I think that will help bring peace. I, I'm looking at the time and I cannot believe this, that uh, we have only 15 minutes left. And I'm looking to see if there are any questions really quickly. Okay, Heather, do you have that board that lists out dinner plans for the week displayed in your kitchen? That was shown in the slideshow. I do. It's okay. a little uh, craft project that I did. It's a, a five by seven frame. Um, and then I just put menu at the top and it's a, just a piece of glass and I just use a dry erase marker and then I write down. The, the idea is that it's really for me to tell, let my family know what mm -hmm. is for dinner. Um, but I don't think anybody else looks at it. I think it really is just for myself, but that's fine. Do you know what? I would kind of um, maybe disagree with you on that. And I'm not disagreeing with you, but have you ever in the past been where your husband says, let's plan to go out for dinner Friday? If you hear that on two minutes before you go out, there's nothing big deal about going out for dinner. It's like, yay, let's go. But if you plan on that on Monday and say, hey, we're going out to the Walker Roadhouse on Friday, all week you'll think about I'm going on Friday. For me, I think just that little menu planning like that is really sweet. I, I also think that you are instilling some great organization techniques into your kids into your children without even saying a word that yeah, I think enough that's, of you that's probably to, true to have this planned. I mean, that's just a personal note that I'm, I'm thinking myself right off the bat. I also wonder, um, do you have any other non-scale victories? You talked about shopping for miniature clothes and, uh, <laughs> and having, you know, pictures that you are not afraid to be seen. And just kind of the joy of feeling I'm not standing out of the standing out. Right. Are there other non skill victories you've had? Um, well, I will tell you a little bit. I know we talked about this uh, earlier in the week, but last week when Lauren had her, did her um, exercise of having us close our eyes mm. and to visualize us at our goal weight and what that meant and what that felt like. Um, one of the things that kind of came to my mind uh, last year during COVID uh, we switched out our swing set for a trampoline in our backyard for our kids. And I have never been on the trampoline. And so I told my daughter, this is, this is a not, not yet realized non-scale victory, um, a goal, I guess it is. Um, I told my daughter that once I hit my goal weight, that I'm going to get on the trampoline with her. And as soon as I slipped told her that she said, well, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to be jumping on the trampoline. I'm not going to be doing any tricks like you do on the trampoline. I'm going to be simply jumping, but that'll be, that'll be a, a, a feat for myself. <laughs> wow. That's, that's, I can't even imagine it. <laughs> and I have jumped on a trampoline, 135 pounds. At, I mean, not, I was at, it was like at 115 pounds. That's like, that would be an amazing accomplishment. So you're going to do that very soon. Hopefully. Wow. And I'm, I can pretty much promise that I'm not going to share any photos of that because it's probably <laughs> not going to be very pretty. So Barb in the, uh, asked in the chat about me sharing um, a photo of my two week meal plan. Yes. And when, when I get off, I'll post it on your uh, Facebook group, Noreen. Okay, that will be great. And also for those who missed the slideshow, if you watch the replay and they're posted in the Starting Out Bright group, um, I keep the, the slideshow with it. So you'll, it'll all be there together. Again, so what, one of the photos that was in the slideshow, I don't know if you guys oh, yes. these, I was going to ask you um, that. are my two mantra bracelets that I wear. One says, shine bright, and the other says, choose joy. And um, I actually had those made for uh, by one of my commercial tenants in the, the neighborhood that I work in. And so I just posted uh, 
a link to her her website of where you can get those made. Okay. She has kind of some standard ones, but then you can get um, custom ones made. And so those are the two that I had her make for me. Okay. I'll post, or either you can post that in the Starting Out Bright group too. Okay. You sure. Do that tomorrow? Sure. Or tonight? Yep. That would be great. So, you know, tonight, I'm sure that there's somebody here who or who will be listening, and thanks for letting me record this, Heather. Yeah. I'm sure there's somebody who has just maybe gone down the road that you and I have, where you've tried diet after diet, and now on the verge of trying something new. Mm -hmm. What would you say to them about beginning Brightline eating? Um, I would say, take it one day at a time. Don't, don't overthink it. Just focus on the four bright lines, um, from meal to meal, really. I mean, you can break it down that small if that's what you need to do. Just focus on, and I know that in the past people on your, your, um, your calls have talked about, and it, and if things don't go the way that you want them to do, focus on doing the next right thing. Yes. Absolutely. What do you have a favorite mantra besides the ones that choose joy um, that you say said over and over in those early days? Um, I think that what you posted the, the all in just the mindset that that was what I was doing. I wasn't going to do this part way. I was going to just do it all the way all the time. That was kind of what I focused on. That is so fantastic. And that's where I want to be right now. And I have been, I've been doing really well. So that's it, awesome. is, it is definitely the all in. I mean, if you're going to be partially bright, you're going to just partially get through your days with some kind of integrity too. And uh, one thing that I said to myself all the time in the beginning is when I look at back to this day a year from now what would i say to myself what would you say to yourself to that heather who is starting out from where you are now that don't underestimate yourself that you can do it yes one day at a time yep. i'm going to check and see about any more questions and Okay, I don't see anything. So what is going to be your next outfit that you buy for yourself? I, I, I don't know what it is, but I am drawn to buying jeans. I, and I, my daughter and I went shopping today and I literally had a pair of jeans in my hand and I said to myself, I do not need any more jeans. So um, my husband and I actually have a, uh, a cruise booked for October which nice. hopefully, hopefully we're going to be able to go on. Um, and I already have like all my dresses for the evenings <laughs> for that. So, I mean, I really don't have a whole lot of, um, I bought a pair of shorts um, for the summer the other day. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's just fun having a whole new world opened up. Well, and it's, and it's like, this is now the same world. Like you can plan future days, not thinking I'm going to gain the 20 or 30 pounds back. Right. In your mind, I am going to maintain this. I'm going to work the maintenance and you're not afraid of it. It sounds like. I'm a little nervous, but Are you? I think I am a little nervous, but I think I can do it. And I think the strategy, if you're following exactly what you know, the book is saying, why, why back up, not back out now? Right. From a winning strategy. Right. You know, exactly. So it's like, you know, I, I have to believe that it's all going to be possible. But anyway, it looks like we're wrapping up and I'm looking to see. Okay. Somebody now is saying that they remember my first post about my doubts and this is really true i thought about it today and i think i'm going to post and starting out bright what is your why because what i posted was my feet 
my first day was my feet were so swollen and I had to make a decision. What am I going to do? And I'd like to tell you that I'm hitting close to 200 to Wonderland and I'm going to have a full on pedicure. <laughs> I don't want to gross anybody out, but I might post feet. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So that's awesome. So your why was just your weight. There was no health problems, right? No, not really. Okay. Not really. Well, I was diagnosed with prediabetes. Okay. Um, and like the year before, um, and that has all gone away now. Um, but other than that, there really wasn't. That's just a, that's just a memory now. It looks like you have somebody. Oh, your dog. Okay. I thought one of the kids was meeting you. But anyway, I'm going to give you the last word, Heather. If for anybody or for any comments you want to make about the program or many, maybe about your menu planning. Um, yeah. I mean, feel, anybody feel free to reach out to me um, with any questions about that. Um, yeah. I just, I, th I mean, I think the program kind of speaks for itself. And if you just go by what, what the book says, you know, you, what, you, you can you, be successful. You're sparking an idea in me right now that maybe I'll just shoot out there because I think that there are others here that might want to play this game. Um, I don't say game, but maybe a strategy. It's like build a two week menu. And I'm thinking maybe we could get that started in the Starting Out Bright group. Like, let's build a two-week menu. And I know that there are some in other cookbooks and things like that. But why not just throw some great ideas together? Like, throw one good recipe out there that you know is a winner in your family. Wouldn't that be yeah. fun to just have a, a mixture of, of meals that we could yeah. just pick from, we maybe could be able to put it under the topics folder and, you know, be able to choose from there just for some ideas. Yeah, that's a great idea. I think it'd be fun. Yeah, and, then, sure. and there are so many creative breakfasts as you have used. Um, right. That would be, I think it'd be great. I know I could use some ideas when, cause I do my breakfast and lunches. So anyway, we are getting close to the time and Heather, there's a lot of people saying, thank you. And thanks for your great ideas. You are, and I love the idea of the bracelet. Um, the copy of the menus you're going to post in the group. And, yep. and again, just many thanks to you today. Um, and I am going to close by saying thank you again, Heather. Thanks to Poochie there. <laughs> Being a good dog. Yeah. What's the dog's name? His name is Simon. And he oh. just rang his bell to go outside and nobody <laughs> let him out. And so he came over to sit on my lap. Okay. So anyway, I am going to say good night as I do each week. And again, thank you so much. Next week, it's going to be me with my niece, Jenny. And it's called The Table is Turned Edition because she's going to be interviewing me. I'm going to be interviewing her too, mm -hmm. but uh, that should be fun. And so then it'll be at 7.30 next week. So anyway, I'm going to say good night. Good night. Stay bright. And don't let the bed bugs bite. Good night, everybody. Thanks, Noreen. Okay, so Heather, let's play Three Question Thursday, where okay. everybody wins and I don't know the question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Question number one, you are planning breakfast and all you've got is oatmeal as your grain. What are you going to make? Um, I think one of my favorite breakfast recipes is the PB&J on the go from the Brightline Eating Cookbook. It's so easy. Really? Um, yes. It's I three ounces. Three ounces banana, three ounce. I think in the cookbook it, it uh, calls for cherries, but really I've made it with blueberries. I've made it with raspberries. Raspberries is probably my favorite. Um, and then it has um, nut butter as the um, 
as the protein. And you basically just mix those three ingredients together and then spread it out in a pan and uh, freeze it. And I always make a quadruple batch. So then I have, that was what I was supposed to eat for breakfast this morning and I could not find it. I have now located it. And so it will be my breakfast for tomorrow. Wow. Um, so and yeah, so that's one of freezable. My, yep. That's great. Because it, it, because all it has is uh, peanut butter and banana fruit, another fruit and oats in it. It's yeah. You need to eat it kind of frozen because it would be kind of just a big oh. pile of mush. Okay. But I, uh, I went to Trader Joe's last week and I found a, um, a berry mix that has cherries in it. So that's what I'm going to make use the next time that I make that recipe. And so it's like a three berry mix or something. I think, think it's raspberries, blueberries, and cherries. So that's what I'm planning. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm kind of running out of my meal, my breakfast meals in the freezer. So I think I'm going to be doing a bunch of batch cooking on Sunday this week. That sounds fun. Okay. Mm -hmm. Peanut butter, peanut butter breakfast. That sounds really great. Okay. So you've got that for oatmeal. All right. And let's see. Number two, question number two, what is the one thing not to do when you're starting out? Is there anything you yeah. say don't do that? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't mention this during the call, but, um, Another reason why I'm even surprised that I made it past day one, I, I made a new recipe on day one. That was like the worst decision ever because I hadn't really weighed anything and I had a certain amount of, I think it was broccoli or, and, and or cauliflower. I made this shrimp dish, garlic shrimp dish, which was really good but I didn't have enough vegetables and it was, I, and I cried and it was, it was really terrible. No, so do not know. make a new recipe your first day or your first week, I would even say. Okay. So don't try something new the first day. Okay. Question number three, what has been in that gratitude journal? If you can recall, what is one of the happiest things you were grateful for about the program? this past year? Um, I think just being able to write down at the end of the end of the day that I had a bright day. Um, that was an amazing thing to be able to write, like sitting down at the end of the day, the day's pretty much done. Kitchen is closed and just being able to write. It was a bright day. That's awesome. That is awesome. And you are awesome, Heather. Thank you so thanks. much for being here. And yeah, thank you for right. playing Three Question Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. So yeah. good night, everybody. All right. Day Bye. Night. <laughs>